everyone, and welcome to TWI Talks After Chapter Discussion of The Wandering In, Volume 9, Chapter 41, Part 1. Now, wow, this was a, this was a mighty comeback for the, for the, regularly, scheduled, uh, the regularly scheduled chapters. No interludes, not this time. I definitely got uh, some, some brilliant slice of life in this one. Some, uh, some very powerful, uh, some very powerful, uh, dialogues going on. <laughs> Empire thinks they're losing their touch, says Wizard. Says Weird Wizard. Alrighty. We're going to start with, uh, general thoughts. And, uh, y'all want to start pinging me on who would like to add their thoughts on there. I will, uh, get to them. Let's see here. Uh, Edaron, let me start with you. Yes, I was. I I like this chapter really, really, really much. Um, life of Life in TWI is always nice. It was called. Uh, also, I I thought it was about the solstice, but it was. In my opinion, more of an Aaron chapter, but whatever. Um, I like that we got an insight about uh, what it, what does it mean for uh, to to be a knight, and Aaron's insight about what she thinks the Order of Solstice uh, should be or could be. Um, Pirate broke again somebody's heart, and I think it's it's good for it's I I would even say it's good for him to get a wake up call for the real world <laughs> that uh, he is it's it's hard to say but he is still a goblin and it's it's a bit of a rational decision like not to get this any further. Because uh, the people outside of like the in family and like maybe this course area are not ready for a relationship with the goblin, I guess. And um, so it was good of her to end it to end it there. The end of the chapter was hilarious. I we got lots of pirates humor again. And yeah, overall, I like this chapter. I agree. I was, uh, I was, uh, doubly giggling just inside everything. Aaron coming back. Of course, Aaron's my favorite character. I understand her. I'm always happy to see her, but, uh, just having her back as the driving force is, uh, just, uh, just a good time. Plus, all the slice of life really came through. It was, um, it was less structured in a way than uh, uh, some of the other chapters have been. Didn't really revolve around uh, much of a core theme, in my opinion. But um, it really uh, danced around the end a little bit, like uh, I think we did last time, which was uh, which is fun. Um, Mr. Wiggles, you're up. So oh, just... I forgot, I forgot oh, go something. ahead. Oh, sorry, go sorry. Ahead. I forgot something. Um, I also... It was nice to see... Uh, like how much responsibility Aaron has as right now. I mean, we always knew she had responsibility, but to have again to see her on a full day with her schedule, talk, talk, talk to these, talk to him, talk to them now, uh, try to get like laser thoughts. It's uh, it was interesting to see that Aaron is now is 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 really now a person with an agenda and cannot just lay around every day. That's true, even though she just took a month off. Yeah. She's uh, forgetting it. <laughs> Mr. Wiggles. So just to touch on your comment about there may, being no overall central theme real fast, I think that's partly because this is part one of at least a two-part chapter. So right now we're getting... You know, we're getting the we're getting several different plots progressing at the same time, while 
next chapter they're all going to smash together. You know, we kind of already saw that with uh, Rabbit Eater and Aaron touching base here. But That's a good part. Part, of, part of the reason I think they're touching base is because I believe Aaron is going to try and give Rabbit Eater like a goal to set himself to try and get him to uh, do some of the legwork for getting Tarandria's Santa's initiative off the ground, you know, try and get in touch with the lords he knows because he has access to uh, at least five lords right now, uh, along with this order of seasons. So he ha- he's in a very good position to help her with this. So that's part of the reason I think she contacted him. Uh, 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 sorry. Also, another reason is because he. Uh, obviously is helping her just by being Rabbit Eater. You know, just seeing him uh, is helping Aaron. But yeah, overall, I absolutely adored this chapter. Um, I'm super excited for next chapter to see how the Blood Feast ties into this, how Norman deals with that, how Aaron deals with that. Um, at, I'm even somewhat interested in how Salkis deals with that. I I still want her to die. But maybe just die <laughs> quickly now, you know? You know? Yeah, I really it, hate it, it if uh, if Numcom gets uh, dragged into Sox's shit. Yeah, it it, it would uh, be good comeuppance for him. It would help him grow up a little bit, I think. Yeah. But anyways, uh, I love this chapter. Just seeing Aaron and Rabbit together once again was amazing too. So yeah. Overall, a plus chapter, nine out of ten, ten out of ten, maybe even. The lies you tell, Wiggles. <laughs> Actually, says my power. No, um, I have to agree, Wiggles. I I really enjoyed this one and uh, the stuff when Terendria with Rabbit, especially when Aaron showed up, was uh, was definitely my favorite. The Ivory Five, I think, can do no wrong. They're hilarious. I adore their. Uh, dynamic. I mean, they're throwing spells at each other, playing around, kicking each other on the floor and stuff. It's uh, just top tier stuff, in my opinion. Renorus, come speak your mind. I like the chapter in an ex- to an extent, but I also didn't like certain parts of the chapter. And this Excellent. is maybe just me being kind of like, let's just get to the new lands already. And that's kind of been my that that I've been kind of solidifying into that position the more I'm reading volume nine. But which I mean I get like it's not that I don't understand why we're like it's kinda like why it's pacing like this, because we have the winter solstice coming up. But you know, we just got introduced to I guess between this chapter and last chapter, you know, Blood Feasts are going to be doing a hit. We got introduced to the new Terlin Lord. I'm just going to be honest. I'm kind of like, at this point in the story, I am not interested in these antagonists. Like, I'm not interested in a bunch of kids who are getting used by, like, some bandit lord to, like, go terrorize unprepared cities because we've seen how this plays out you know like this like we've seen enough of this in the story to where i'm like okay yeah they're gonna hit a hard target and then they're suddenly gonna be realize that oh shit this is a really scary world and half of them are gonna die probably if not more and i'm like I'm not, I'm not really interested in that. I mean, the most interesting part is the Salkis Numtong dynamic, and you know, I kind of agree with Mr. Wiggles. Like, Numtong would probably benefit from realizing that he, you know, shouldn't be playing with people's hearts, and then I, I think to an extent, kind of, you know, when he's doing that, he's leaving himself open as well, right? Um, and then I didn't the Terlin Lord. I'm like, I think he makes sense. I think Aaron was always going to clash with the Northern nobility because, like you know, they fought the Goblin King, so they're 
not going to be pro-goblin in a very irrational manner. But I don't understand why he's... You know, if he was just anti-goblin, I think that would make more sense. But he's also anti-antinium, which really doesn't make that much sense to me just because, like, the Antinium are actually kind of good for the Norden ability because, like, they sap resources from the Drakes. I'm not saying they need to be, like, best of friends or anything, but, like, you know, taking a species stance against the Antinium doesn't make much sense to... And, Ed, Edron, you're saying everyone's anti-Antinium. I mean, yeah, but, like, not... Like, everyone's formally anti-Antinium, but then, like, when Kissenberg goes up north, it's not like everybody's like, oh my god, it's an Antinium. It's like, run for the hills. You know, it, it the, the reactions was a bit more muted, and that was something we explored previously, where it was like, the north didn't really care all that much because they weren't the ones getting attacked. Um, And, and so... I... It does, I mean, it makes sense, but it also, it's like, doesn't make sense. And I'm just like, this guy is like, how good is this guy? Like, actually, like, let's be honest. Like, if this guy was actually a threat, and he was actually a power player in the north, he wouldn't be showing up in mid-volume 9 as some rando who, who got banned, like, who basically just, like, lost track of time in the Haven. Like... I don't That's know. True. I, there's, I a, don't, there's a couple, there are a couple questions about Zidane. Uh, I'm but. not like, like we, we got the Rando Reinhardt up north, but at least that guy was like, like legitimately a genius. He got a genius class. Like, you know, I'm like, I'm way more worried about that guy versus this guy. Um, and so I'm just kind of like, why are we getting these like middle of the road? villains that we've already like we've already seen this play out like let's just get to like actual interesting uh pop progression in in my opinion so i love the parts of rabbit eater and aaron i don't like the new villains i i think it's kind of like retreading the same ground and it's just kind of there to fill time until the solstice like the solstice is gonna be a big deal but i don't like okay like, we gotta feel ground, I guess. I mean, you know. I 100% agree with that, by the way. So, <laughs> that's, that's, fair. My, uh, that's my take on the on the chapter. No, that's fair. I, I appreciate that. Uh, my dear, uh, ping me if you guys want to chat. Want to chat. Um, no, I, I understand. And uh, there is a, there is a question uh, regarding uh, Zidigen Turland uh, a little later on. Maybe we can take it right after General. Uh, General thoughts. Um, Kikanolo, you are up. So I enjoyed this chapter, uh, but I think I enjoyed it most because it's felt like the story's been on hold for the past month or so. And so this was like really the story coming off hold. And so I enjoyed it for that alone. Uh, and then, but beyond that, I specifically, I enjoyed the whole part in Terandria with Rabbit Eater. I also agree with the previous speaker's point that uh, the whole blood feast thing, it's kind of done. Uh, I don't really care much about that, other than the whole, it possibly being a vehicle for Numtongue to like grow up a bit, which would be cool. Uh, but I do, on, on the topic of Zidigen, I I kind of liked him, though I think that Lionet salvaged his section quite a bit. But what I... I, I liked him not because of him specifically, but because I think that, like, the five families as an institution and, like, the individual lords are, like, two separate things almost. And he's one of the first true representatives we've seen that seems to represent, like, the institution of the five families rather than being his own lord. And from that perspective, I thought that, like, most of his stances were pretty reasonable, like you know, put a check on these things. Uh, and so I don't actually think that he's going to be a villain. I think that he's going to end up more as, like, another neutral party. Be uh, unless I'm misinterpreting him. Because I, I really see him as, like, the first real representative of 
the five families of the institution, not a dedicated representative, but not his own lord of Turland, the way Magnolia, Tyrion, Maviola, Grisaria all are. Uh, so, I mean, I think he has, there's potential for interest in there. But I also do understand, like, a lot of the stuff that gets, happens in the inn is like, can we just move on to the real stuff? Like, that's why I like the conversation with Chaldeon. Uh, and actually, I did really, really like Lionette getting a chance to shine this chapter, if only a bit. Nice. Well, thank you. Good thoughts all around. Um, Word Wizard, you're up. Um, <clears throat> not not to retread what everyone else is saying, but I'm. It's like, yeah, I kind of agree that the the Zidogen guy is a uh, is like he's just this middle of the road guy who shows up and it's like this is how life is. I'm kind of like I love the chapter and everything, but it seems to me that's mostly set up. Because, like, Aaron is now, Aaron and the Inn are now entering, like, this new stage of politics, basically. It's the way I see it. Um, it's like, yes, the, the people, like, the high-level people that come and talk with her, like, enjoy talking with her for their various reasons. Chaudion, Maviola, uh, Magnolia, and so forth. But, um, she does, but it's like in the, yeah, you're gonna go places type kind of way, so we're going to keep an eye on you. Ooh, but we don't really have to take note of you too much. It's like, but now though, it's like, it seems to me like the, the Blood Feast is getting set up to be, be what I want to see anyway, to be like a long-term type kind of enemy for the Order for like the rest of the volume. Because the, like the the Order can't just spring forth fully formed and go forth and draw swords and fight Roshal now. Well, even though Aaron would really like it to be able to do that. But, um, yeah, she hasn't realized that, uh, that a bunch of level 30 plus folks who actually, like, have their path in life are, uh, are gonna just drop everything to join up. Um... But yeah, it's like she she doesn't have the people or the clout to like interact yet on on the level of politics that uh where she can just talk to talk to random lords like that. Um and that I think this is a good like benchmark of like this is where she is and this is like she's putting her her uh, muscle together, she's getting her political clout out and, like, wherever that actually is, and, uh, and we'll see where she grows from this point forward. I see. That's a... No, it's a, it's a good take, I think. Um, I think I might have to disagree a little bit on, uh, Aaron's not at that, you know, at the stage of the uh, political intrigue. Personally, um, I feel like uh, she's been she's been at that stage, but she's been waiting. She's been unwilling to take backers like other political entities would, and um, she's uh, I think this is finally forcing her hand a bit uh, with the uh, with the letters that are coming out later. We'll we'll be discussing, but um, yeah, the thing about Zid uh, Zidogen, I was I'm really glad people are uh, also picked up on. Uh, a little bit of a different tone shift for him, but um, let me read out a few of these, and then we'll uh, we'll jump into a, uh, we'll jump into the questions here. Um, S. Alas says, "My favorite part of the chapter was Aaron's discussion with Chaldeon. It would be interesting if the guy Rag spared back in Volume Five comes back and spares some goblins during the next raid." Oh, I uh, wow, that was Volume Five. That was way back. Um. Penbit says, I believe in reply to uh, the Turlin's Antinium hate, says it's because he's being served by the Antinium. It is insulting to his sensibilities to be served by a lesser being. Yeah, that guy's kind of a dick. Um, Action Kermit says, I'm a bit confused about why the Blood Feast Raiders are gearing up to mess with the Wandering Inn 
when it's been established for multiple volumes that they avoid high-level targets on purpose to keep from being discovered. Aaron's M is a magnet for high-level specialists, specialists uh, who can blow their cover, uh, like the last, like the last T-Dag. Hmm. True. Um, Ocean says you're assuming that's what it will be. Uh, that's very true. Uh, Panbit says I think Rabbit and Numtung are about to have the funniest fight about polygamy within Goblin society, and whether it should be normal outside Goblin tribes. Polly represent. <laughs> Um, Cal says, um, Citizen reminds me, uh, reminds me more of Magnolia's relatives we've seen. They're not the head of the house. They're crappy people that generally contribute to the bad name of the nobility, but they still have enough power to, uh, have enough power because they are who they are and that you have to walk carefully around them to avoid trouble. That's very true. Uh, uh, Bookworm says in response to actually Kermit's questions about the Raiders, uh, didn't they specifically want to test the limits of the door of portals? I believe that's true. Um, anyone who can create an, and then Edron says anyone who create an army by just asking for help is on that stage. I agree. Um, Oshi, you wanted to say something, please. Sorry, I'm laughing at Reddit stuff. Uh, <laughs> I got a little distracted by Reddit. Uh, hey everybody! Nice to see all the new people. Um, welcome. Hope you guys are enjoying yourselves. Uh, the chapter. All right. First off, Wiggles, the cheerleading. You gotta stop, man. It was not a ten out of ten chapter. I'm gonna go with maybe an eight, maybe a seven. It really goes down on like what kind of POVs you like and how much plot movement you want. This was such a setup heavy chapter. It's very slice of life, which is always fun to experience, which makes it a fun chapter, but it doesn't have emotional, like massive emotional depth. It doesn't have the kind of uh, plot movement or anything like that. It's definitely not there. It, it can't. Wiggles, you're going to say this chapter, this 10 out of 10 chapter is equivalent to Pisces chapter or the two rats chapter or. Uh, the multiple dozens of other chapters in volume eight. You're going to say that to me right now? Fuck you. Um, that's why I'm we're saying. we're all just happy to be back. I think yeah, we're all just we're, happy to be back on the main story. Yeah, I, I think that that plays into it. But folks, like I've had this perspective a little bit for a while now, is that with Pirate doing so much more like bigger works, they are not changing the way, like, oh, all right, all right. Can I do story time, or am I going to take too much time from your your stuff? Oh, we've been going a half hour already. We might want to speed it up. Okay, you know? so I'll wrap it up, and I'll tell you guys about it later. But it was a whole thing. Um, the chapter itself, structurally, it, it it's kind of weirdly like it doesn't have a climax. It doesn't have any kind of three act play stuff. So it very much is work is built around how much you appreciate the the pieces that pirate are putting in is putting into place that's why i think there's the part one moniker to it right because pirate wanted you to understand that this is a companion piece to some a larger thing um which i think is actually very well done by pirate it's just like you're you're building something and pirates now giving it room to breathe and developing it properly i loved the chaldeon interactions because it, it's the first like explicit acknowledgement of the fact that Chaldeon might kind of want to keep Eren alive, and that as much as he is a magnificent bastard, he's also the guy who's about to die in like a year. And even if he doesn't physically die, he's losing his his faculties, he's losing control, and he's got to keep these with with Chaldeon. They nearly lost two cities and tried to el eliminate the Drakes. Uh, sorry, the the Nalls. They did disastrous things. Without Chaldeon, can you imagine what the Drakes would be like? He's literally been the guy who's the behind. Like he's every time a hero props up, the Drakes kill the hero, and then Chaldeon has to kind of clean up the mess and keep them together before they break apart. That that pressure is something that Aaron has not quite experienced yet. This is the uh, the pre warning that Aaron, you're walking into that world now. You have to do make the decisions that Chaldeon does, and how, 
and this is a good way to represent just how deeply Aaron could be changed by what happens and the challenge that she's facing. Also, it's kind of like that moment where you're experiencing this is what Chaldeon's entire existence has been about. He was like Aaron before, and then he became the the uh, this archetype now. He chose all the choices that he made. He started off like Aaron, too. And it's unfair of us to forget that he's seven... He's over a hundred years old. He's very much gone through stages of this, and he's at the end of his existence. It's very different. And I love that. I also really like the joke with um, Aaron and uh, Terry kind of uh, boomeranging the exploding <laughs> blade. That <laughs> yeah. was hilarious. I love that joke. It was so Throwing good. Throwing the actor back and forth between each other. I yeah. know. I, I, people were in the stream were like, like Alias was like, well, this, this conversation doesn't add anything. And I was like, are you kidding me? They just acted like friends and talked to each other. Like, that was the talk, yeah. right? It, it's yeah. really hard to... It, like. It's one of those things where it, it's like air. You don't think about it until you think about it. But relationships don't come out of nothing. They don't come. It's great to think about those uh, life or death moments. But and because drama um, novels dramatize it. But in general, relationships aren't always built on massive life or death moments. It's built on talking to each other and sharing your lives and and having stupid moments like that. Sure. Without it, you can't be like. How are you going to be friends? How are you going to trust each other? You need that trust. I, I thought it was a good first step. Um, and the other thing that I really want to highlight is that I was heartbroken when Pirate uh, initially wrote the end of the chapter and sort of skipped over the part where they said that, well, I waited a month to talk to everybody. Like, I was truly, truly heartbroken because the idea that Aaron Solstice, whose genuine wish was to have this world's eye theater um, that would let her speak to people, be present with them, be in touch with all of the people that are going away from her for a month. She doesn't use it on top of the part where she doesn't like, I was just heartbroken. I'm so thankful that they did the edits that they did and they fixed it up. And I really appreciated knowing that she is talking to other people and that she did go um, and like, do something for the people who are maimed and hurt. Like, can you imagine he's not that kind of a person? I, I can't. I would have broken me if, if that was true. I was very, like, I, I was very teared up from that moment. I, I, yeah, I woke up to that and I was not happy with it. Thank God Pyro made this. Yeah. Okay. All right, that, that's all I kind of had to say about the chapter. Oh, the, did you guys I, like the ending line? Did you like the ending line, si Sidehammer, from um, the strategist dude, the Earl? From the Earl. Uh, what does he say? Um, oh, yeah. Uh, his his champion will always... Where is it? His champion will always have his back. Will always have his back. Wasn't that it? Yeah, something, yeah, something like that. Yeah. I should have known that Sir, that Sir Solstice wouldn't language long. After all, his champion will always... Will never fail to have his back. That was, uh, yeah, that was, that was pretty good. Alrighty. So that was, that was great. Uh, we've got a couple more here uh, before we, uh, move on to, uh, questions. Um, let's see here. Um, uh, we did that one. Um, Kikanolo says it gets like a plus three for being the first real story chapter in like a month plus. Got some agreements. I have to agree with myself. Uh, somebody is typing. Um, Elariel says, I always love these chapters that are showing us tension building and moving pieces around. Because no matter what I get hyped about, there is literally always something about to pay off that we never saw coming. And the execution is always so satisfying. You know? Yeah. I'm agreeing a lot, but yeah. Uh, Weird Brother says, I still think Aaron played him on the body art comment. Uh, that's referring to uh, Chaldeon's uh, apparent lack of loss of memory. Oh, see, your mic is still on. Oh. Okay. Uh, Penbit says, uh, the hot potato was great. I agree. Um, Elario says, Aaron, the shenanigans are always 
add something. Panda says, Aaron was essentially going, I will end us both. Don't test me with the mega bomb. He's a very solstice effect, guys. <laughs> and Weird Wizard says, that was good. Alrighty, uh, well, we were, we're starting to move along to, uh, the Zitagen Turlin stuff. Um, so how about we, uh, we get into that? So let's see here. Did, um, here's the question. Did the Zitagen Turlin fa- uh, friction feel off to you? The tone suggested that this is something to pay attention to. But what makes this guy different slash more serious than every other authority Aaron has already trounced? Should Aaron get more pushback now that she's uh, farther known, or should she keep flouncing? Would you prefer more realistic reactions from the authorities or more of the silliness that we tend to get? So basically, your thoughts on uh, Zidigen and uh, that whole interaction, the way um, Leonet came in and tried to plague him for some reason. And uh, plenty of stuff like that. Um, Edaron, come on down. Yes, I personally think that Lionet overreacted a little bit in regards of making an enemy out of uh, this this man. Because I don't know if I see that wrong, but at this stage, at this point, Eren is like or the wandering in the institution of the inn is way more important than some than the honor of some of of uh, representatives of the five families. He he wasn't even Aaron is regularly talking to heads of other noble houses. She has connections to many world leaders. She in her own self is like one of the most important person, well-known person on the world right now. Everybody knows the innkeeper of Liscor. Like, truly everybody. Everybody important knows the innkeeper of Liscor. And to have to, like, bow down to, to, to some representative who break the rules of the inn, I didn't really like that uh, Lionette was... So, so small. I, I, I didn't really yeah, so get like, who right. Who the hell are you? Like, who the hell are you to come in here and kick Bevel's match? You know? Correctly. People Aaron, lose their foot for that, dude. <laughs> At this point, Aaron is like, I don't know. She's fucking important, and he's some lordling. Yeah, so it was, it was Nobody can to... tell me that one call to Magnolia wouldn't, like, stop everything every retaliation that this guy could plan or an announcement from Aaron Solstice to like, yeah, this and this, no quests for you or, or maybe she, I don't know, something. And no I quest mean, for Turlins, no, no travel through the inn with Turlins. You know, I enjoy correctly. walking home from Drake lands, you know, what a total asshole. So I, mean, I, I don't, I didn't like that line that made, uh, I mean, obviously, a peaceful co- conversation is always better, but the guy was a total asshole, and uh, he, yeah. I agree. Uh, weird wizard, take it away. Um, Lionette was also trying to get the keep the murder bot golems from going off inside the inn with everyone else in there who probably couldn't have taken him down down easily uh, not counting like Shriek Blade because hey, they're Terminator robots um but yeah, it's like he, he basically just acted like Zavara did at the beginning of the story uh, it's like she, she doesn't know these people she doesn't have a she she does not have they do not have the exposure to allow her to to completely interrupt their worldview and turn their life on their heads um at this time it's like yeah she she's an innkeeper and she knows some things but what's she really going to do for me it's like she she just doesn't have the the capital to influence uh, every random 
guy from the other side of the continent who walks through her door. Huh. Like, I think this guy's just living in ignorance at the moment, to be honest. I think he's just stepped in some shit, and he's he's not going to know how close he was to some getting some real some real hate on him. Oh yeah, like if he had like someone would have stabbed him, (laughs) but then there's like okay, it's like this guy is vaguely important. It's like I mean, yeah, he he wasn't just like a couch potato. He he, uh, it's like he he rode the horse. He had the the equipment for like his archery gear and all else, whatever. It's like, he actually goes out and does stuff apparently. Uh, And just to get stabbed in a stabbed in by the random innkeeper, even if it, even if she is famous would have been bad. Hmm. I don't know. I forgot one thing. I think I might have to disagree. Adiron, please ping me. Yeah. When you, uh, I, I forgot to say, that I that that uh, some that the guy even started to make trouble in the inn because at this point every lord or every I mean isn't it political one on one to know who you can piss off and who you can't piss off and this guy should know that he should not piss off uh, Aaron Solstice in the middle of her inn when he knows that. Uh, when he knows what she is and who she is associated with, so well, that's, well, that's the argument. Is, does he know? Does he know who she is? And if she, he if should she know, he's a lord. He's he's playing on the highest level of political intrigue in this yeah. land. Every it's political one on one. Who can I piss off and who can't I piss off? No, that's true. We really need Ed. She's been here for like two seconds. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm literally interrupting she's because this this feels like it's like dragging out. Well, look, she's been here for she's two and a half seconds. In 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 the world, she's been around for three. She's been famous for a month. House Turland is has been here forever, and I keep trying to tell you, it's about not pissing off House Turland. Lena did the right thing because now he was the asshole who stepped into an inn. Didn't know what was going on, made a fool of himself, and he embarrassed House Turlin. If Aaron had escalated, it would no longer have been about an embarrassing, an annoying relative of the head of House Turlin went to an inn and embarrassed himself. Instead, it becomes a story about the wandering inn attacks a noble of the north. It's not about the persons involved, it's about how you represent yourself to the rest of the world. Your fame has to be managed as much as anything else. It makes you just as vulnerable. You keep thinking about the dignity of the inn and about the reputation. She's been here for a month. It doesn't a matter. Add your end. This is not. This is not. This All right. Is, yeah. This we're is gonna, not. We're gonna lower the voices. Thank you. Thank you, Roshi. Uh, gonna get to your stuff, but you came up, showed up anyway. Okay. Um, we've got uh, Pemba saying. Uh, noble pride would be absolutely uh, have someone sent to de- uh, sent to a death squad uh, in return to uh, to Edoran. Uh, oh, she mentions uh, a political event from person, uh, but mostly to say you can't piss off either side's politics. Individuals are assholes, but Leon, Leon is uh, defending the inn from House Turland. Not the fuck one. That's a good point. Uh, Kel says, Aaron's got to walk a thin line, or got to walk a line with important people between enforcing the inn and her own standards and not ag- aggregating, blah, blah, aggravating them. She doesn't have her own relations without Turlin like she does with Reinhardt. She can't call up over Turlin and be like, hey, come get your idiot son, nephew, whoever. She needs allies, not more enemies. Um, Aaron has a ton, uh, McSlash says, Aaron has a ton of powerful connections. A uh, few of which, uh, very few of which, could stop a high-level lord from the north. Celt, Abel, Destinies, Nears, Drakes, none of them are in a position to stop Turlin. Magnolia is the only one, and she has lost a lot of standing with the diehards up north, and this guy is one of those diehards. Hmm. The other northern lords know Aaron, but how many of them have actually met Aaron? That's a huge difference. That's a good point. Uh, Action Kermit says, 
Also, that guy has no authority in the south of Israel. Aaron's not subject to the five families. She's human, but not one of theirs. That's interesting. Uh, and uh, what was it says? Zidjan could have bought off like the reporter. Huh, okay. Um, Renneris. Nope, nope. I'm sorry, not Renneris. Uh, Mr. Europe. Yeah. Europe. Uh, um, um, on one, like, first of all, I think people are uh, underestimating the importance of the Turlins, like, as one of the main five families. They, they're they not really a random little lord house. Uh, but more importantly, uh, this is, like, this has been Leonette's whole shtick, that she goes in and acts really, really... Uh, apologetic when Aaron starts pissing people off. We had the uh, to respond a bit to Action Kermit as well. Too, we had a, a very similar situation a long time ago when uh, Lady Pride Ulta came in and basically said, uh, e- "Like commoners are not important. Commoners in lands I don't control do n- are not allowed to." say that I'm not allowed here because I'm more important than them. Like, basically the biggest asshole in the world. And uh, Leonid did the exact same shtick as she did here. And it's, like, been her kind of thing to be overly uh, apologetic to an annoying degree, honestly, just to, uh, uh, like, (laughs) as a counter to Aaron's uh, absolute disrespect for everyone. <laughs> and, uh, like, it's, uh, I, like, I find it a little bit annoying, uh, even though I understand it as, like, being logical. But I also think that it's very much in character for the dynamic they've set up. Well, I have to agree. I think it's it's in character for Leon to do it. Just, uh felt less, I don't know, maybe it's just uh, they're stepping on the end and that hurts my pride. You know, maybe that's what got me into it. Uh, Evan, first I've heard from you. Let's, uh, what do you got? All righty, so uh, where should I even begin? Okay, so this this chapter was pretty good, just on the, the fact that it was an Aaron chapter, you know. Um, but one thing I, I got to say, like, what I've noticed is Aaron seems to just be a little bit too nice for where we are at in the story right now because we have this lord, he walks in, he breaks her only rule. Alright, well, actually, he didn't kill any goblins, but he harmed a goblin. Okay. And he basically gets off scot free. So I feel like that kind of shows where the inn's uh, power is at the moment. Because we've seen that with the Maestro, too. We've seen that with uh, Magnolia. It seems like people are kind of just walking in, messing with the inn, and then getting away with it, really. So, I I feel like Aaron hasn't really taken her her actual defense properly. Like, we know uh, Bird wants a Ballista. You know, we, we know she's got to upgrade her inn into, like, this basically fortified castle. And she's recently been playing with her uh, her magical food, which is good. But it seems like, so far in the story, there hasn't really been anyone who wants to, uh, like, who's who's her actual enemy, you know? Like, no, one, no one's, like, out here trying to kill Eren right now. So I think when the Blood Feast Raiders come in, she's definitely going to get a, wake, a wake-up call there. Um... But yeah, that's that's my two cents right there. Uh, I'd like to hear your opinions. Alrighty, no, it's a it's a good uh, good uh, good thoughts. You know, um, the uh, it just it did seem uh, those things that way. Um, sorry. Uh, let's see here. Um, Mick slash said, um. Oh, I already wrote that. All right, that's that one. My bad. Um, the Almighty Nubs says, I think 
The blood face attack could possibly be what pushes Aaron to develop the fate's vision that Shay is trying to teach her with chess. Aaron has already shown possible progress with it during the Chaldean conversation. Possibly. Uh, we have the Raiders specifically attacking within the range of the portal door, in members being spread throughout the region dealing with Santa issues, as well as uh, Aaron and Corazon Reels both being in an organization slash command position, position of these opposing forces. Uh, it could almost be seen as a chess match between Aaron and Corazon. Uh, with the end members and the Raiders as their pieces. It would be a match with a lot of lies depending on Aaron's performance, and we all know how much Aaron cares about saving lives. So I think it it could be what finally pushes her to develop the fate vision. That's an interesting, that's an interesting point. Um, got some uh, some agreements in the chat. Um, where did you want to talk, or it, you just wanted to say that right there? Um, kick down our law, please. Uh, so, I mean, <clears throat> I, I think Zidigen, it's, he's not as bad as everyone's making him out to be. Like, he, he showed up, he wasn't looking to pick a fight when he showed up, as I understood. He just, he came to deliver a message and was offended by the presence of the goblins in Antinium. He didn't kill anybody. He only, the only kick out at Pebble Snatch was like a reactive thing. He didn't actively come looking to kill or pick a fight. He came to, like, deliver his message, which was a pretty reasonable message. Like, recognize the limits of your Aegis. Recognize who you can protect and who you can't. And, you know, tell the Emperor to put a check on his unchecked expansion. I think all of those are pretty reasonable messages. And yes, he's an antagonist right now, but I don't think that He's like fully opposed. He seems like a, he's like he's he's a bit of a jerk. Yeah, none of those. Are, I mean, but those are reasonable messages for a Lord of the Five families to show up and give, pretty peacefully. He it took three levels of insults. Yeah, I know. I know the insult threshold is a little low, for uh, because he's like a lord. But it took three levels of insults for him to even think about having his golems do anything, and he was pretty easily diffused by Lionette. So, yeah, he's a bit of a jerk, but he's not some big asshole. And I think it was complete, it's com completely the correct move to defuse him because he's a representative of someone important. And possibly even the whole institution of like the whole thought process of all those nobles sitting in, five, in, in first landing. And so I like that Lionette had to defuse him. Uh, and. Yeah, I mean, I just thought that he's not some, he's like, he's not a big bad. And I mean, people are saying they can't take him seriously as a villain. I don't think he's that. I think he's just like uh, emblem of the times. I, I think someone else put it well, like he's just more of an indication that Eren's on a new level of political power. It's just like, you know, new level, new level of politics. Mm -hmm. Well, it's good to have multiple opinions. Uh... Let's see here. Um, well, okay. Let's see. Edge Dancer says, uh, he didn't come to deliver a message, though. He just ranted after showing up there. You can just leave. It's very caring behavior. Similar to what Myla did, honestly. Eh, that's a good point, I suppose. Um, I don't know. It just, uh, it definitely felt like uh, Pyro was putting him up to be uh, a, a point of opposition. But uh, somehow he's getting, somehow he's meant to be uh, different from all the other ones that she's dealt with before. And I'm not sure I personally, uh, I don't know, buy that uh, just because he's a Turland, you know, just because he's out of loop, that uh, gives him a pass. But I do take everyone's, uh, I do take everybody's uh, opinion, I mean, opinions on it. It was, uh, you know, the politics, you know, it's definitely there. But, uh, and, uh, your opinion could, uh, you know, waver between, you know, Aaron should do what's right for what she feels or, you know, she should, uh, she should bend to politics, you know. I suppose that's within the reader's, uh, everybody's, uh, different opinion on that. Let's see, um, Evan says, Aaron doesn't want anyone to die, but yet nothing is 
done to make her in safer. I'm curious to see what she will realize. Uh, what she realizes what she has in this score is very fragile. Yeah, that's very true. And Kenya says, uh, when Aaron was killed, it was as a bystander of that kind of pettiness. Things are different now, and I don't think they could truly hurt her. But maybe others could end up uh, dead or hurt because of this kind of thing. Yes, I have to agree with that. That would be, I think, particularly devastating to Aaron if someone died because of some just petty squabble. Um, all right, uh, we've been on this talk for quite a while. Uh, let's uh, move on. We have uh, Aaron and Chaldeon today. Uh, I'm just going to think there's a couple of different. Uh, here we go. A couple of different uh, questions. Uh, we're just going to merge them together. I'm just going to go full on Chali on topic now. Uh, Aaron and Chali on have both, uh, both have the same issue, letting others uh, have control and agency. Both fear what others will, both fear that others will fail. Aaron is mainly afraid others, of others dying while Chali and worries about the consequences of failure to blast in the world, in the wild city as a whole. Um, it's also a point in which, uh, Chaldeon uh, may have been uh, losing his memory, or um, Aaron might have been uh, seeing something in the the, f- the probability switch or the the fate sense, as we've been calling it. Um, personally, I have to say I I really enjoyed the um, the the dance with Chaldeon did this this, uh, this chapter. Um, I do like seeing the uh, the comparisons between the two, and Charlie and seeing Aaron as something of a, a younger self who hasn't been beaten down by all the decisions he's, he's had to make. Uh, I think Oshi had a, a really great take on that earlier. Um, that uh, Charlie Young used to be this bright-eyed person, you know, but he's been holding together for 100 years. You know, I think that's a, a really interesting way. Um, I do think Aaron really does need, I personally think Aaron will need to have to step up. And uh, I think that was a lot of what um, was frustrating uh, Norman is that, you know, he wants to get out there and do and do something good, but she's afraid of risking him or people who are, and she's thinking that uh, higher levels will, will make it better. But I think she's wrong. I think she just, has to risk it, you know. Um, at the same time, I'm not sure uh, the uh, the Aaron Fay chess thing. Uh, I think it would be uh, I don't know. I think it'd be a really dick move to tell to tell an old person you that they to gaslight an old person into thinking that they forgetting things. I I guess Aaron doesn't really know that Charlie is scared about that at the moment, but. That was I was I was really affected when uh, when Chaldean uh, was uh, so scared that he uh, he had uh, he said something before and I do appreciate that Pirate didn't write that part into the story so we didn't see it personally it was implied that he could have uh, we could have done it uh, so it, it leaves it up in the air I saw a lot of people in the, in the chat earlier talking about Aaron playing a fate chess move on him but um, but yeah that's uh, those are my th- my thoughts there. Um, who do we have here? Um, Pan Bit says, I think Charlie and Age is hitting him. I think it came up like he was forgetting stuff before. Yes, I sort of do too. Uh, Mr. Europe, you have something you'd like to say? Please come and take it away. <clears throat> yeah, I really enjoyed Sheldon's perspective here. Uh, the, uh, there were really good moments and like Lots of stuff. It's getting really apparent that he's getting uh, like he he's getting very worried about the fact that he's uh, getting old despite all the potions, uh, and like he's getting, starting to forget things and just generally declining. Uh, it's really interesting. Like he's a very interesting character, and that just slow, like, very slowly getting more and more desperate, and I really hope 
it doesn't end with him doing a Cassigna deal or something, because that would be really sad. I was thinking <laughs> about that. I really, enjoy, yeah. Yeah, I really enjoyed the part where, like, the quote of where, uh, like, the divide between them was like a younger Chaldean and the old Drake who compromised on everything but victory. It was just like a really good and like just sad line about how uh, all he all he really like had now was just this super cynical protection of the city, and he's dying and he doesn't have any replacement, so he's just losing in time and they're just, just getting increasingly desperate. Just, yeah. It was a really good Sheldon chapter, I think. He's begging her to just take some of my men, please do what you do with them and give me give me another Salus. Give me a Zell Shivertail. You know. It was a, it is a really tragic thing to see as well. You know, this guy's if you think about it, if if you put him in the um in the place of the protagonist, you know, he's fought all these wars and what Oshi was saying earlier about, you know, all the stuff that, um, imagine, you know, him not being there, all the stuff he has, you know, um, been able to stop from happening. Um, but just even the stuff he wasn't allowed to stop, you know, the, the two, almost losing two walled cities, you know, things like that. That was, uh, it uh, puts a, it puts a nice perspective on, uh, where, uh, Chaldean's coming from. Um, let's see. Edge Dancer is quoting the scene. Uh, they say they love this moment. Chaldean was an optimist that's been beaten down by years. Uh, longer than his lifespan should have been, frankly. A lifespan make, of making hard choices. Yeah. Um, Word Wizard, Weird Wizard says, Chaldean has the risk of Cassigna, but Aaron might just get him into a, might just get him into a remnant. I just get him into another. I think that would be interesting. I'm not quite sure what you mean by that. You mean get him raised as a revenant? That's kind of crazy. Oh, okay, yes. Uh, hmm. That's a hell of a thing. Poor Chaldean, let him rest. Jeez. Uh, Benbit uh, says, uh, it's just his quote. Okay, should I, I read the quote? I'm going to read the quote. Okay, um, come back once you've read your letters. I need another Zell Shivertail, Aaron Solstice. I need another Zell Shivertail, Aaron Solstice. Uh, she called back after him as he opened the door, got to her feet and raised her voice, eyes flashing in a shout. You had one. Why did you abandon him? Just because of who he was? Talion turned at the door, his eyes glinted deep within their sockets, one fake, one real. In the end, Aaron Solstice, he wanted... What I could not give him. I truly thought he would win in the North and come back and order us into line. I would have enjoyed that. But sometimes faith is a terrible weakness. And then he was gone. Uh, and then Jansen says that the quote brings up uh, that he is um, that he and Nova oh, that he and uh, Oneva were, Oneva were more alike uh, when he was in youth. Celeste just never Tried to fit in, and that's how Chaldean lost his spunk. Uh, he let the Drake Society turn him into just another cog in the wall rather than someone pushing the limits and actually improving the world. That's a, that's a good that's a good chat. Uh, Almighty Nubs says, I don't think this was the case of Chaldean's having memory issues. What he said was right. He didn't talk about bodyguards at the start of the combo. Uh, when he had a uh, lapse, when he had the lapse, when talking about the lance losing limbs, he uh, accepted fairly quickly that he had that he had had a lapse. However, this time he specifically walked back through the conversation in his mind, and was certain he didn't say it. Also, if it was Aaron having an experience with the fate vision, I don't think it was intentional. I think Aaron unknowingly used it because she hasn't properly learned to use it yet. It's still a work in progress. That's that's a very interesting point, and I think uh, come back in part two, we may get an answer for that. I'm not quite sure, yeah. Uh, Mr. Europe uh, took my let him rest uh, quote. It says, let him rest is not 
great when resting means being eaten by a cat. Now, uh, <laughs> the only other afterlife is fighting for Antinium Heaven, so that's not particularly restful either. Well, you can still rest if you don't believe in an afterlife. Uh, but let's not get into that. <laughs> uh, Word Wizard, please. I A crack theory I've had in my head is that um, Pisky's if Pisky's could uh Pisky's and Aaron facilitate the uh the whole Chaldean turn into Revenant thing. But uh Chaldean has to agree to fight to help fight Roshal. And that would be that would be something. Pisces. Pisces. Yeah. I'm sorry. Uh, I was Pisky. I'm sorry. I, I pronounce it Pisky's. The okay. um <laughs> the the but yeah, like Re- Revenant undead Chaldeon fighting a guerrilla war to free slaves against uh, uh, against an enemy that deserves no sympathy. It's like... Yeah. Like, isn't that, like, something that, like, every... Like, I, I could be completely off base on this next comment, but isn't that something that, like, every soldier right, and commander or whatnot, like, wishes they had... Like uh, oh, like they, when they fight, it's like just like no second guessing of did we just screw this up? Did did we bomb the wrong village or something? And it's like no, that they're slavers. They're entirely based off the subjugation and like the the torture and hurt of uh, of just like people that they steal out of houses uh, like from children to us. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. funny. Like a completely just war, and it's like. Like you, you don't have to feel guilty about it because, like, you know they are terrible people because because they are terrible people. Now it's not it's just something Nazis. that you tell yourself. It's yeah, Nazis in video games. Yeah, I get you. Yeah, it's like, like, yeah, that I think that would be cool. Yeah, I could. To be honest, I think Revenant's a little beyond Pisces at the moment. Though he's about to hit a capstone, you know, he could do that. Uh, that could be. It could be in this book. Um, Ed's dancer says, in return to letting him rest, goblin noises. Okay. <laughs> and, uh, Evan would like to talk. Uh, I think we're going to be closing up soon. So let's, uh, let's make this one the last of the child the Uh, Evan, take it away. Okay. Um, right. So, Loki, I just, I just, uh, forgot what I was going to say now. Um, but I did like the Chaldeon uh, part of the chapter. Uh, I like the the concept of maybe she's starting to go into like getting her fate powers. But uh, <clears throat> yeah, no, I, I completely had a brain fart there. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Does anybody have any more Chaldeon stuff they wanted to type in chat now? We're gonna move on to some uh, final bits. Final bits are going once, going twice. Okay, we're on the final bits. Ah, okay. Um, so, uh, final bits. Um, uh, I guess it's just, uh, uh, I guess it's just in uh, Fiesland at the moment. Oh, yes, is that for, is it for Chaldeon or is it for, uh, final bits? <laughs> you just go on, go on, just talk. <laughs> go on, just. Oh, yeah, there you go. But yeah, I finally finished the chapter. And oh man, I like it. Like, I like all the change that's happening. I love Darren's entry to Faisland. Like, oh my God, talk about an entrance. And uh, overall, I like the speed with which the plot is moving. I did think it was getting slow in the middle. And yeah, it was probably intentional. But maybe like Pirate realized it and sort of, you know, included it, included it in the story as a part of the storyline. It was very, very, very heartbreaking to see all the letters. Um, You know, I had an idea um, like maybe Erin takes the whole Grinch trope and reverses it. Sort of like how in her world, the Grinch is like this uh, green skinned, red eyed uh, you know, monster of gloom. Um, <laughs> oh, who else do we know who's, you know, green-skinned, red-eyed monsters of gloom? So, 
if you know she can ask rags maybe give them a quest uh if they're not able to mobilize nobility but to do pr for the goblins she can like you know give them quests where they have to wherever they're localized um uh, because yes yeah, changes just imagine wyverns flying yeah. overhead dropping pa- dro- goblins dropping packages down on little uh, parachutes exactly. and stuff <laughs> exactly and eventually you know they work with the local militias uh because people like the lord uh, lord douchebag who we saw earlier in the chapter they're not going to change their opinions of goblins uh, unless they do some serious pr you know that's good so point. yeah so i'm kind of hoping that happens in the future uh yeah like final thoughts on the chapter it's it's a good chapter it's one of the better chapters that i've read uh in terms of plot moving along um so yeah loved it love you pirate awesome awesome all right <laughs> say um all right uh mystery of uh, never turned to tell you uh, goblin noises all right if you're going to turn jolly on into a goblin i suppose that works how's that Ah, uh, what was this? Said uh, goblins work for Santa, you know. <laughs> Lariel says delivering firewood and food. Oh, I would be sobbing. Yeah. And Emma says, Oh, I was just going to say, I am missing the Aaron, the Aaron that Loki stole those artifacts from, for the benefit of Salus. I want to see more of that, Aaron. Aaron, and the kind of thing goes in the gray area for the benefit of defeating the gods. We're growing. Yeah, I think that's. Um, oh, Ben bit says goblins are elves, you know. Ah, I think, I think we may agree on that. Um, anyways, um, I do think that Aaron has been so focused on fighting the gods that she hasn't been taking in the other things to account. I really think the the um, I really think that the uh, the letters she received um are going to. Are going to be a really big wake-up call, and the way uh, the order of season, uh, order of solstice, is going to uh, um, account for, uh, uh, account, uh, not account for this, uh, direct themselves. They're going to be, uh, they're going to be a, a mission of uh, relief, a relief order, of some sort. Um, is this, uh, you know, is this uh, what you're expecting from the uh, from the order? What did you particularly think was going to happen? What did you want to happen? And uh, do you think uh, answering prayers like Santa Claus was uh, how it was going to go? Word wizard, you have the floor. I'm of the opinion that this goes kind of ties back into the uh, Trial of Blades. But when they talked about Aaron Solstice's uh, honor and whatnot, it's like she fights. She doesn't go. She doesn't necessarily go looking for a problem, but when she finds a problem, she fights it, whatever that problem may be. It's like, and she doesn't pull punches. She fights dirty, and she needs a bunch of people. Then she needs people that can do that for her abroad. Um, yeah, like the the that child that that old fashioned notion. That's what I want to say. The old fashioned notion of a uh, that there's evil. Uh, draw your swords, let's kill it, that uh, Norman has in his head. That's what the order is supposed to be. Like, th- like we're going to go fight, and when we're done fighting, we're going to go home. And uh, we'll drink blue juice. But, um, yeah, th- th- there's this uncertainty about it, because he's talked, because the only other knights that he has around a great deal of are the throne bearers. And they're different. And it's like the, uh, and it's like, yeah, the throne bearers at one point were, were the, okay, we're going to go kill the evil now, but they got away from that uh, because that's how life went. Um, so yeah, she, she needs like, like, yeah, the honor of the, the honor of solstice is in choosing who to fight and when to fight and, uh, but not necessarily how you fight. Which could potentially lead into some interesting dilemmas down the road, um, but uh, but yeah, it's like like that. That's what she needs. That that's what she wants. Is like we're we're going to get these people and we're going to go out and we're going to smash the bad guy, 
until he stops until he stops moving is not recognized. Um, you know, it's a uh, it's a uh, interesting uh, parallel when they're they're talking about how uh, how Rabbit Eater fights and the way Norman fights. They're both kind of dirty fighters, but that is also how Aaron fights. I mean, she'll throw a pot of boiling oil on your face. She will end. She doesn't start the conflict. She will end the conflict. You know, exactly. I mean, uh, she, you know, maybe she wants that could people be, that will that 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 will go fight and come back home and, and come back home alive as many pieces as possible. The yeah. um, if she realizes that these these aspirants that's what I call them um the, like Menelit and whatnot that are uh, that are trying to join up that they would go out and they would do that at because she asked it of them. It's like then she would have them join up. She would join, have them join up anyway. She would knight them just so she could have an excuse to give them armor and like help them, because she would do that anyway. But she hasn't like got that into her head yet, which is a little frustrating. But uh, but yeah, yeah, she's realizing that. I think at the same time, while she is, I think she's. Defining what the order should be, I think at the same time, um, she's going to have to learn that, you know, you don't always have the best, you, you have to work with what you're given as well. You know, it's like the end wasn't perfect when she became an innkeeper. She had to, she had to clean up all the dust. She had to, you know, fix the tables and chairs and then it got exploded a couple of times. She had to rebuild it. You know, I think she's going to start learning. That's going to be, have to be, you know, how. Um, she takes the the order. It's not going to be perfect from the start. It's gonna it's gonna take some doing. And she's um, gonna have to have to learn yeah. how to do craft for the knights to to oh, yeah. help them to help buff them up and get them going. She's gonna have to pay a pound of flesh to to I mean to Chaldeon to Nears to um to Feotep to all the other rich and powerful people. To get herself, you know, uh, equipped, to get her people up. There's a. She's gonna have to sacrifice in order to get this done. I mean, I think that's what the. I think that's what the. Um, the Santa Claus letters are really gonna tell her, and I think that's what she was referring to. You know, Chaldeon gets his his pound of flesh. Yeah. Um, Evan says the Order of Solstice should perform. More like a mafia than knights. Do what needs to be done to win. That is a very romanticized version of the mafia. Um, Eshelas, Eshel, Ahelas says, I love adventurer sections, and I was hoping the Order would go fight things like Tolv and the Blighted Kingdom. An Order of Emergency Runners seems too mundane for a bunch of fighters that Aaron wants to be a minimum gold rank. Hmm. That is a, that's a good point. That's a good point. Uh, Evan says, uh, I like the direction the order is going. Keep the night count low, but elite. Uh, they already hinted to being more like the Knights of the Round Table. She wants she wants her knights to be legendary. You know, that is a good point. You know, I can start seeing it both ways. And I I get the feeling... Uh, uh, yeah, so I'll, I'll get you. I promise. <laughs> I'm hoping that requires fire system. That's funny. Mr. Europe. Okay, yes. Take it away. Sorry about that. Sorry, yeah. Uh, so I think Erin is going to be leaning into the second chances part of her class. Because uh, she's what? Witch of memories and second chances. And I think the kind of people that she's going to recruit in her night order are people who were forced to be underhanded when they had aspirations to be better. And I think she's looking for those kind of people because they would be happy to put their put their everything on the line, maximizing their chances, um, maximizing their chances of coming back because of the personal goal that they have, which is redemption. And, like, you know, she might induct people like Cal Ruse or <clears throat> the immortal, sorry, the immortal uh, Antinium. Uh, what's his name? 222. Answer. Uh, yes. Answer, yeah. And, um, you know, people who 
sort of know what they are ha- know what they've been forced to become but want a second chance at reinventing themselves i think that's the kind of people she's going to target and honestly the most interesting person to me seems and and we've had this name drop in the chapter as well is going to be persua oh wow that's uh, that's i know it's like i think uh, why I think you hit the I think you did the nail on the head about uh, the theme of it the second chances I do really I really like that night and now I I want that to be the thing because I really like Kara's to get on get out of his his uh, rut to say but Pursuer joining the order that's whew, I don't know if I could trust Pursuer especially after but the that's, rewrites that's the theme isn't it like you want a second chance to reinvent yourself and Pursuer has yeah, realized I don't know if she's realized it I don't think or maybe we'll see an arc where she realizes it. I mean that will that's I mean we saw what she could have been. We saw what Pursuer yeah. could have been in a different world. And you know, I I got choked up when she when she sacrificed herself at the end in that in that chapter I'm like, yeah, that's great. But the Pursuer who saw that didn't get choked up. She was enraged, you know. <laughs> she was like that's wow that i don't pursue wow that's <laughs> oh, i know right that's a that's, like that's i think it'll be it'll be so interesting to see pirate tackle a redemption arc for pursue it it would be a hell of a thing if she could pull that off they could pull it off kel says if pursue if pursue joins the order i will literally stop reading the story <laughs> uh towards word was it says no you would hope to die <laughs> then uh uh word said earlier uh she's going to have to send people out who won't come back and once she accepts that she'll hit level 50 and then says wow pursuit and join the order i didn't consider that yeah that's uh, you're crazy yeah she's crazy that's a hell of a thing i almost want that to happen just to see how it goes but That's a, that's a lot. But uh I don't know was if uh sending out someone who won't come back or sending out knowing that someone's going to die so hit level 50. Uh it's like is it the system is the system trying to is the system trying to um push Aaron into the role of general again? because that's what it did to Chaldeon and it broke him. You know, I think she I think she has something different in store or in mind herself and I think I don't know. Um I'd be uh, I'd be a little it'd be a little strange if that happened. If that was it was all just to push her back to being a general again. I think we're trying to keep her away from general. And that's the thing the generals do. So, I don't know. Maybe she'll make it better. Um Elariel says this is unrelated. I am scrolling through the chapter, but it always feels uh, nonsensical to me that Aaron has alcohol immunity. Most skills make sense to me, but I never understood why she got that. <laughs> uh I don't quite remember when she when that happened personally, Elariel. Um word was says oh, in response, uh it was a capstone, I think. I don't think it's just oh and then uh i don't think the system is trying to push her i think she's just going that direction interesting mr up says skills are pretty random uh weird was says ofma talked about it when comparing was it to Aaron to shaman yeah oh, partially random sorry about that sir um yeah so uh i think this is a uh, good place to end it unless uh people have uh some other bits they would like to uh, go off of uh closing thoughts anyone and um I mean, we've gone on for about now and a half now they wanted me to keep it in an hour couldn't do that some people couldn't stop talking um we're just typing people are so that's good Um 
to be honest, I think that uh, coming back from the break, coming back, well, not what break, it wasn't really a break. Coming back from the interludes and getting back into, um, and getting back into the flow of the story with Aaron at his head, steaming forward, you know, going full steam, Aaron, uh, and then her, uh, and then her interactions with Rabbit Eater afterwards, um, really made this chapter for me. It just, I feel like, I feel like coming back, an old friend, like, yes, now we're back. It's just a relief. I think that really upped my, uh, my enjoyment of this. I could see how that some others would, uh, would not have the same opinion. But, uh, so I think, uh, I really enjoyed this chapter, but, uh, I, there could be mitigating circumstances, you know, little asterisks on it. Um, Word Wizard says, waiting for the next chapter, we'll probably have to reread this one before starting the next. Yeah, I could go through it again. I think I've been through it twice already myself. Just, uh, writing out my notes and stuff. But, um, unless anybody has anything else to say, uh, I think that will be the end of, uh, recording today. Thank you everybody for coming.